Good evening, everyone. My name is Janet Fishman, and my company is Hope Organizers. Every month, I bring you an interview as part of my interview series that relates to organizing. Everything in life relates to organizing. For example, if you're going to be planning a wedding or you're going to be planning a party or a anniversary and you need to get all the details ready for the the wedding or the anniversary and you got to get the catering and you've got to get the uh, video man or woman and you want to get the um, decorations and you need to rent the chairs and the tables all of that involves organizing and one of the uh, most important things that you need when you organize an event is a photographer or if you have a, a business and you are running a business and you have a website you have business cards and you have brochures you need to have good photography representing your agents for that brochure for that website so we're going to be hearing from a photographer tonight on how to organize for a photo shoot and i want to tell you a little bit about pixie pixie spindel his company is called pixie vision photography and she has been a photographer for many years she's a los angeles based photographer that specializes in corporate headshots worldwide weddings events, celebrations, religious traditions, creative portraits of families and performers. Her customers love her energy, her responsiveness, her post-production work, and her ability to capture intimate moments in any setting. She has over 17 years experience shooting for events of all sizes and themes. Welcome, Pixie. We're very glad you're here tonight. Oh, thanks and, for having me, Janet. And so um, let's get started. So tell me, Pixie, when a client is considering a personal or family shoot, what should they start to think about? Well, for a family shoot, I would start to think about what you want captured. Like a lot of people want to focus on their children, for example, and um, you got to think about outfits. You got to think about connection with family members. Uh, for a personal shoot, like uh, personal headshots or, you know, boudoir or anything personal, you got to think of uh, the energy you want to bring to the shoot and your clothes and um, just, you know, for headshots, especially you have to focus on the clothes because headshots, you know, they're from here up. So you have to focus on the collar line, the necklace, your hair, make sure there's no frizzies. So um, yeah, you want to focus on that. And can you tell the, me the, tell the audience the difference between a photo shoot and a large group? Well, a large group event would be like a wedding, a bar mitzvah, uh, a birthday party. I recently did a 60th birthday party for somebody and it was, you know, 200 people in somebody's backyard. You know, some people, um, a, a personal shoot is like one-on-one, -on -one. you know, an outdoor event or uh, any kind of large event. It's focused on like the energy that's already there. So uh, with a personal shoot, you're focused on a goal. And the goal is to have these headshots that represent who you are. So you want to be one on one with the photographer as opposed to an event. You're already having fun. My job is just to capture it. So yeah, I guess that would be the main difference. And what should a client that needs a business photo shoot consider? Business photo shoot. Well, you want to be authentic. Of who you are and what, how you want to represent your business, right? So you want to think of, again, clothes. You want to focus on um, just, you know, what you want, how you want to represent your business. And what about like their, their feeling, the feeling like in their business? Right. So you want to have like, I usually ask for three adjectives. Uh, do you want to feel, you know, empowered? Do you want to, you know, be very professional? Do some people have performing businesses? So they want to show a lot of personality. Um, so yeah, to just get aligned with the end result, like visualize the end result and then work backwards. And do you do any research on that person? Like if they're a musician, do you go to their website? Oh, yeah. And listen? 
Yeah, because I also like to get my take on their business. And so I like to meet them halfway with how I'm perceiving them and with what they're bringing me in the shoot. And it's all about confidence. It's all about um, just, you know, being fully present and starting over, resetting your energy while we're shooting. And yeah. If a client has a photo event, such as a wedding or bar mitzvah, a birthday party, a corporate event, what kind of questions should they ask different photographers as they're interviewing to find a photographer? Right. So you want to ask them, you know, number one, if they're available. <laughs> number two, uh, research their work, research uh, the reviews, go on Wedding Wire, Yelp, um, and just get a feel for their style and make sure that's the kind of style. Some people like documentaries, some people like uh, unobtrusive, you know, so you want to focus on that. Um, I think I wrote some notes here. And what about yeah, also the contract? You want to also be very mindful of asking them for a contract and uh, deposits and all the logistical stuff. And what about like rehearsals and deliverables? And yeah, that's, that's all going to be in the contract. Okay. And, um, and then their experience or if the wedding is indoors or outdoors, you have to yeah. talk about all, all, the, all the logistics. Yeah. And what does a client need to do to, to prepare for a photo shoot? Um, I would say focus on music. Music is a big uh, boost when you're doing a shoot. Um, some people like happy, upbeat stuff. Some people like jazz. You know, you want to embody the music as you're going. Uh, music is also a great reset tool um, because, you know, when you're shooting, it's just you're one on one with somebody and you want to um, have a, an exhale, <laughs> you know, because a lot of people tend to hold their breath and just, you know, stare straight ahead. But, you know, listen to the music, move a lot and, you know, feel yourself <laughs> and, you know, be be fully present in the shoot. Yeah. And what with regards to preparing for that personal photo shoot, what should they think about with their clothing? Like, should they have collars? No well, collars. Shoot. Oh, sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, as col collars, no collars. You know, sh how should the collars lie? Makeup, hair, what kind of things should they? Well, do? I would say for headshots, you want to go for like solid colors. Like for now, like if I was wearing a pattern, it would take away from my face. So you want the energy to be on the face, the focus on the face. So um, I would focus on the colors and also the collar line. So like this collar line is a maybe, but a collar line like with a V with a nice necklace that frames the face, like a, a, a long necklace tends to go to the side and I have to correct that as we're shooting, which can sometimes take away from, you know, what you're trying to project. Like, hey, you're feeling great, but your necklace is askew. So let's stop and fix the necklace. So necklaces, uh, clothes, the collar line, um, and also that you feel comfortable. You want to feel comfortable and ready to share. Yeah. A lot of people come into a shoot and they're like, all right, I'm here. You do the work. Like, no, it's us meeting each other halfway. <laughs> and their clothes might be wrinkled or bunched yeah. up or their bra strap is showing. Or Try on your clothes the night before. <laughs> Make my Photoshop job easier. <laughs> and Try to, um, you know, get the wrinkles out. And if you don't like what you're wearing, bring two or three things. Some of my clients bring a whole suitcase of clothes and I just rifle through it like, yes, yes, no, no. And uh, I know it looks good on camera. So I'm, I'm able to help people with their clothes. And what about um, hair and makeup? How should their hair be? Um, should, How it usually is. Yeah. You know, and like, you know, pomade on the top. Sometimes there's a little flyaways up here. So just a little pomade right before the shoot like this, that really helps. Um, I would say if your hair is frizzy, uh, you might want to put it up. Um, but again, it's whatever you visualize the end result. Like, no, I usually wear my hair down. Well, then wear your hair down. <laughs> so, yeah. And makeup, should they have it professionally done? Should they wear lighter colors? Should men put a little powder on to reduce shine? I would say men, uh, if they're if they don't have hair on top, they should they should put some some uh, powder up top, but men know, otherwise it'll show, I can do Photoshop and like take out any dots it, or, you know, stubble if it's there. Um, but, you know, men should be clean shaven and um, just feel ready. Like, you know, look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, I feel good. I want to shine, let's rock. <laughs> so, yeah. And if children are involved in the photo shoot, should you 
make sure they've uh, taken their nap? And like, is there a particular time of day that photographing is better because the sun is not so good at certain hours? Yeah, so the ideal time to shoot is about two hours after sunrise or two hours before sunset. So you wanna try to avoid the 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. hour. Generally, in, in summer, it's longer. Like I do my shoots, I finish shooting at like 9 a.m. I do my shoots super early with that beautiful morning light. And um, at nighttime, like right around this time, it's still pretty hot. So summertime, I would avoid, um, you know, shooting too close to sunset. I would recommend shooting in the mornings. But uh, for kids, I would recommend definitely have a nap, schedule it before or after the nap. And with kids, you know, I just, I just, I'm on their time. <laughs> you know, I don't make them do too much. I want to capture authentically who they are and their connection to their siblings, their connection to their parents. So I just let them be who they are. With adults, I can say, okay, you know, let's, let's rock with this vibe. Or I can, you know, give suggestions more to adults. But with kids, I just want them to have fun. I want them to have a good experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what does a client need to do to prepare for a corporate photo shoot that might be happening at their offices? A corporate photo shoot. I would say we would talk about the background. Some people, lately I've been doing a, a dark gray background. I feel like that looks really classy, similar to this color, but you know, not the pattern. Um, talk about the background. Um, bring at least four or five different tops. And because I shoot so fast, so we can do a lot in an hour session. Um, and again, the same thing with personal shoot, just, you know, make sure your hair is good, make sure you're happy with your outfit, make sure there's no wrinkles. And, yeah. and if, it's a, if, if it's a corporate shoot, it should be a professional attire, right? Yes. Yes. And again, you know, minimal on the necklaces for a corporate shooter, a very like small, delicate chain for a woman would be nice. But again, I mean, it depends what kind of business. So, <laughs> yeah. Tell us what happens in post-production. So after you take the photos, what happens in post-production and what is a, what turnaround time should a client expect? Well, I have a fast turnaround time. I know a lot of photographers don't, they'll like make the client wait for six months, but you know, you're waiting on your memories, I'm, I'm ready. So unless I've got a client before you. Um, but in post-production, I polish off the images. I make the colors pop, co contrast, saturation, um, I can fix minor things, you know, in the hair and in the clothes and the background. If there's some guy walking in the background in a park, I can take him out. So I do a lot of post work just to make sure the photo is, is like the focus is on the face. And what about um, digital images versus print versus photo albums? Do you do all of those? And should that also be a consideration when someone is interviewing a photographer, finding out what the end result is going to be? Yeah, well, I mean, think about your grandparents' wedding albums. I mean, they become heirlooms, right? So you want to um, preserve your memories. And people that are running out of, you know, God forbid, houses on fire, they grab their wedding albums, they grab their photos, you know, their memories. So I highly recommend printing your memories. And I offer albums, I design them myself. I, you know, I have a, a wonderful album team um, and that my designs are pretty, you know, romantic for, for weddings and bar mitzvahs. I just, I love making an album. So, and you would talk about that and that would be in the contract as well. Have you ever had a situation where you had an author or a musician that you were photographing and they wanted to uh, license the photos that you took. Yes, yeah, I've done uh, some magazine covers, for example, or someone will see a, a fantasy photo I did and they wanna put it on a magazine or, you know, uh, and so I'll, we'll talk about licensing. I've done CD covers way back in the day, like 10 years ago, um, way back in the day. And uh, they would say, hey, I like this picture. I wanna use it for, for a CD cover. And I'd be like, okay, what's it being used for, it, you know, and if they're just starting out, you know, I'm, I take it on a case by case basis, but, you know, I've done some work with major record labels where, you know, my price would be higher than somebody just starting out. So, you know, I'm an entrepreneur myself, so I believe in my clients and I try to make it easy for them to use the photos. So I don't usually do licensing unless it's something, you know, big, <laughs> you know, like a big corporate client usually. How do you want to preserve your memories? How do you want to be remembered? Right. 
how do you discuss that with clients? Well, again, I mean, that is your legacy, right? When you're, when you're gone, your photos remain. Your photos, your words, who you are, it represents who you are as a person. And so take as many photos as you can while we're here, right? And have so much fun doing it and be playful and, you know, share your love with people. And there's this, uh, this client I had recently, she was fixing her daughter's outfit and her hair constantly. I was like, you guys aren't bonding, right? So I was like, look at her and just like, remember the day she was born and she stopped fixing and she just looked at her in the eye and they connected and that was the shot. All the fixing, all the futzing, all, the, all that stuff. It doesn't matter. You know, the connection is what lingers. So again, how do you want to be remembered? That's what photography is all about. And it's really neat nowadays with, with uh, websites that do a lot of uh, genealogy and you can put up there the photos of, you know, your great, great grandparent or something. And then all the family can see it. It's, it's, it's just amazing to be yeah, able to. Yeah, my dad is huge on Ancestry.com right now, and I am the family archivist. <laughs> he used to be, and then he he handed it down to me. So when I go back to New York, which is where my family's from, I am going to take all of his uh, slides and negatives, and I'm going to fly with them in my lap all the way back to Los Angeles and scan everything in. And um, he's like, well, when you're done with that, I'm going to put them in my Ancestry. And I'm like, okay. So we're collaborating on that. It's super oh, fun. I love it. That's so cool. Yeah. So what happens um, when, speaking of old photos and ancestry and everything, what do clients do with old damaged photos that came from great, great grandparents? Well, I do photo restoration. So recently I had a wedding client, uh, well, I had a, a neighbor that her grandparents had this coffee and tea stained wedding photo that she was devastated that it was all scratched and I was like, give it to me. <laughs> so I scanned it in high res and I just went to town. It took me two days to do it, but um, I can restore images usually unless they're way gone. Um, and, you know, I, I mix up the color and the contrast and the saturation, making it look like, you know, back from, back from the dead. <laughs> it's great. As an organizer, I often go to homes where there's been fires and floods and damage and yeah, this this can happen where the mm -hmm. photos get damaged. Give me the photos. I love doing it. I, yeah. sometimes I just do it for fun. <laughs> what impression do you want to give your business clients with your corporate photos? An impression? So like, yeah, if someone comes to you and they say, I need some corporate photos, how do you talk to that client to and, and come up with what what they're going to portray to their clients well, and like very, you talked about beautiful. about being professional yeah. in the photo and you talked about um asking for three adjectives so yeah. can you give an example of some of those adjectives yeah i wrote down some of them um a corporate client usually wants to um well it depends you know which what kind of company but generally people want to come up through approachable um, I'm very visual, so I'll ask them for examples of photos they like, or you know, I'll send them pictures of backgrounds. Um, but some clients, like I, I have a small business owner, and she makes these knitted hats. She wanted to come through with lots of fun personality. Um, but corporate clients, they usually want to focus on like words like authoritative or um, responsible, open, kind. Um, you know, a little smile, but you know, boss lady type energy. Um, but again, I'm visual, so uh, you know they'll send me examples, or they'll just tell me, "Hey, we've got 12 people. We need you for four hours." And I bring my whole studio to their office, you know, their conference room. I'll set it up, and and we'll make some uh, some good polished material for them to use for years to come. So when you travel and you have to go to an office, is your car just jammed full? Oh yes with equipment yeah. and backup cameras. Yeah, I have everything. I've got backup lenses, backup cameras. That's another thing you should ask when you hire a photographer. Ask if they have backup gear. If they don't, they're not a professional. <laughs> yeah. So what makes a successful photo shoot? 
Authenticity. Okay. When you look at a photo and you say, yeah, that's, that's really me. She got it. She got me. And, you know, be proud of yourself that you brought the energy halfway because you know, if you're like, I'm holding my breath the whole time and my eyes look bugged out and that's not me, but I guess we'll use these photos. You're not going to feel happy using them. So yeah, walking away, feeling authentic. So that, that will be a home run. Um, let's see. And how does one achieve authenticity? Do they, do power they have resetting. the, pardon? Resetting, the power of reset. I use that a lot in my shoots. I'll have them you know, spread their toes and feel grounded, you know, because a lot of times in photo shoots, you're thinking so much, like, how does this look? It's the energy is not from out to in, it's from in to out. Like, like, I'm not like this, I'm actually feeling good. And I want you to capture it, you know, not, oh, is my hair okay? You know, you, you don't want to be looking like that. You want to, like, this is really me. So breathing techniques, you know, inhale and on the exhale, just say yes. So, hey, that's better than, I'm holding my breath, take the picture. <laughs> and we don't want anyone to give self-deprecating self right. remarks about themselves because that's going to sour their face, right? Yeah, from the second you wake up, the morning of a photo shoot, you tell yourself all good things. Not one negative comment because the camera is kind of like a, a magnifier. So whatever you're feeling in the photo shoot, it, it will come out. So tell yourself all good things, give yourself a pep talk, have a glass of wine, you know, just feel good and come, come ready, come feeling prepared. Yeah, so I'll do the rest. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done a lot of photography over the years. Can you think of uh, one situation that just stands out that was one of your favorites? Oh boy. Well, I did a wedding. I do a lot of fantasy weddings. And I mean, What's I, corporate, I do corporate events. I shoot everything. I shoot kids. I shoot births. I shoot, I shoot everything. I've been doing this almost 20 years. So that's what I love. My, my job every day is different. But What's a fantasy did, wedding? I'm sorry? What's a fantasy wedding? Or fantasy? fantasy wedding. So it was at Houdini's mansion in Laurel Canyon. Oh. And the bride was a costume designer. And she had a crown of crystals and her elegant dress. And everyone in the wedding party was dressed in different elven outfits. And I mean, my name's Pixie, so I'm partial to all that stuff. She's like, well, you're going to have to dress up for this. Like, you're going to have to wear a costume. I'm like, well, let me show you my closet. So, <laughs> um, so I got to have fun doing what I love to do. And I got to capture these people that were whimsical and so in love. And I mean, I didn't even know these people and I'm crying at the ceremonies. I just, it was a beautiful event, not to mention Houdini. I mean, every door in his house has a, a cast of his hand. So when you go from door to door, you have to hold his hand to turn the knob. But it's just so, it was so weird. It was so cool. I loved it. It was unusual. But is, I mean, that, is that still standing or did they yeah. turn it down? Oh, yeah, okay. It's still there. Oh. Yeah. Wow. But I have fun at almost every event and photo shoot. You know, the, the difficult ones are where they've given up before they show up. Like, oh, you know, my boyfriend and I had a fight and I didn't sleep well the night before. I'm like, oh, I got my work cut out for, for me. But, you know, I'll, I'll give them 150% of myself to help them shine. That's what I'm born to do. So. so would you say shooting weddings where you have to deal with the bride and the groom and the in-laws and the parents and, and they all have different, you know, ideas. Do you feel that, find that the wedding photography is harder than a corporate event, harder than um, corporate headshots, or not, not at all? No, I wouldn't. I, I don't think I have to deal with the bride. I get to deal with the bride. I don't have to. I get this is an opportunity for me to make memories for people. And I've been doing this since I'm six. You know, I'm 48 now. So it's been a long time. I've been doing this my whole life. And I mean, my younger sisters, I used to do their hair and we'd have like model time. I just love doing this and people pay me great. <laughs> but um, I, I don't think what makes an event hard is when people don't want to shine. So I have to give more of my energy to help them shine. You know, like I'm not I'm not against giving a bride a glass of champagne or massaging her massaging her shoulders and having her relax, you know, so that she can enjoy her day. And I've got long lenses, so I know when to be unobtrusive and like hang back and when to go in and be like, you know, why don't you give the flower girl a cuddle? You know, like I see these moments in my mind's eye and I just make them happen. 
it's kind of like a, a superpower. <laughs> I love doing it. I really do. So I, I very rarely have um, bad days doing what I do. I'm, I'm blessed with that. I really am. I really do enjoy almost every event I've, and photo shoot I've ever had. Years ago, you know, 100 years ago, people took pictures. They were very serious. Yeah. You know? And then modern times, people smile more. Do you know anything about that? When they were organizing their photo shoot, was that the style then to be very serene and, and very serious? Oh, you're talking about like Victorian times. Well, I yeah. think they had to hold still for a long time because I think they had a long exposure, right? With those big old cameras, they had to hold still. So maybe it was easier for them to hold a stoic face. I, I don't know. But um, for me, depending on the client, I tend to like a lot of white. So white background, white of the eyes, white of the smile. It's more psychologically pleasing, I feel, um, than... Uh, you know, dark background, you know, darker energy. Um, like, especially if someone has dark hair, you want them against a lighter background. And especially for headshots, you, you really do want that white to help them pop, so. Yeah, so smiling is, I think a lot of people react better to smiles than stoic energy, yeah. Well, does anyone have questions for Pixie? Does anyone have any events coming up or they, recently had an event and they had an experience with their photographer that they question and they'd like to ask Pixie some questions. We can open open everybody, unmute everyone, MJ, and uh, see if there's any questions for her. So MJ, can you unmute everyone? There no, they have to unmute themselves. I oh, can they have to unmute them. themselves. Yeah, that's just the way it works. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Well, you, you did such a good job answering all the questions. <laughs> no one has any questions. Well, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to email me or you know contact me through Janet or her website. I'm happy to help. Great. All right, last call for questions. Um, some of the upcoming interviews that we have in August, I'm going to be interviewing um, a, a senior care manager who helps people that are uh, needing to perhaps get their seniors into an assisted living facility and how to organize that and what information you need to know about that. And then in September, I'm interviewing someone who is going to be talking about healthy eating, how to organize for healthy eating. It's going to be a really interesting uh, talk. And um, then we'll be lining up some other speakers for the rest of the year. All righty. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining tonight. And have a great summer. And we'll see you next month in August. All right. Thanks, Janet. Thanks for the opportunity. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.